Thank you very much. G'day, it's Jai, that Aussie metal guy here with Crank, and today I'm having a chat with guitarist Craig and Lum from Prototype, Psychosis, um, Live Duties with Exodus, and the almighty Bay Area Thrash leg legends, Heathen, who are due to drop their fourth studio album, Empire of the Blind, worldwide through Nuclear Blast Records, September 18th. Craig, and thank you for joining me, man. This is an absolute pleasure to get to chat with you, mate. Thank you. Uh, no problem. Thanks for having me on. Uh, this is really cool, man. I've really been enjoying Empire of the Blind. I love Heathen, man. I'm an 80s child um, whose formative years with, um, you know, thrash metal, dude. So this is an absolute pleasure, man. I've enjoyed the Empire of the Blind album. I've had a real good crank to, to, to it. I've um, had a chat with David last week, dude. And I just want to mention the same thing I mentioned to Dave, man, that the, the album, dude, with this Rotting Sphere and Monument to Ruin, exceptional album. And I love the way those two tracks bookend the album, man. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, my goal from the start was to have kind of a an album experience. And, and I think what I mean by that is like the classic albums that we used to have, uh, you know, love and listen to growing up, um, they had sort of a beginning and an ending. And in the middle was a roller coaster ride that the album took you on. And uh, it, uh, those classic albums were the ones where when you finished it, you were like, man, I want to hear that again. Yep. And, and yeah. so that was kind of the experience that I, I was hoping to try and 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 create with the new re new heathen record um so you know it's got the it's got the uh sort of epic intro um it's got a, a a reprise of the uh intro at the end and actually if you put it on loop uh it's it goes in a circle it starts over again it's what i call the circle of death um, yeah i've done that this morning yeah so i mean it's kind of cool because it's it it, it it's seamless. Um, there are some other musical themes that sort of run throughout the album that most people probably will never pick up on, but um, uh, maybe subliminally and some lyric, you know, kind of themes that run through the album. And, you know, it's not a concept or anything. We just wanted to make something that really felt like a, a cohesive album that was fun to listen to all the way through that had a lot of variety you know, uh, unfortunately, it seems like a lot of records that come out these days are just kind of a collection of songs and they don't really, you know, the album experience is, an, is not really a, a thing anymore. So, um, I don't know. We'll see if we can make it a thing again. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that, Craig, because that's something I've been harping on about for a little while. I don't want people to forget that experience of grabbing an album and just immersing yourself in it for a few days, listening it from track one to the final track on the end. There's nothing like it. And it, you don't get that that have been made just for the the single tracks you know they released five or six singles and that's it and it's made an album made of singles and this isn't yeah well i mean you know each song is is designed to be its own thing but it also has its place on the record yeah and you know that's how all the records that we grew up loving that's that's what they were they were yep. well thought out and and uh you know, mapped out in terms of what the song order was. And I mean, I, I kind of went to great lengths to make sure that we were able to um, have that experience. I mean, there's even what, how does the first half of the record end and the second half begin kind of, you know, like in the old days where we would flip the tape over or flip the record yeah. over or whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I love that instrumental, that fine red mist instrumental, man. The guitar playing is just epic across this whole album. You and Lee are just amazingly talented guitar players, and it's a pleasure to be able to listen to you guys play. It's oh, just thank you. And that instrumental, can you tell me a little bit about that one? Yeah, uh, so a fine red mist was it was actually one of the last songs written for the record. I had this um this riff, uh, I, I record riffs sometimes on my uh, voice memos on my phone, uh, so I don't forget them. Yeah. And I had this one, and I was I was playing around with it, and uh, and I started just it, it just sort of came out like I would say the vast majority of the song just came together like really quickly. So I I sort of quickly recorded it like on uh, on my recording software and uh and kind of put together most of the song 
And uh, the idea behind it was to have what, like what I would call a classic instrumental where there's, there's some element of music in this, uh, in this case, a, a guitar part that sort of takes the place of the vocals, but it still feels like a song. It's not just about shredding all the time. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to, I, I wanted it to be a song on the record. So that was the, that was the original intention. And then uh, during the, the course of, of making it, I was like, Oh, well, it'd be really fun to see if we could have, you know, maybe some guest solos. And, you know, my dream was to have uh, a Bay Area shred off in the middle of the song. So um, I made some calls and uh, I was able to get uh, Gary and uh, Rick from the original Exodus H team uh, yep. to yep. basically agree to do some, some solos. And uh, I called Doug Piercy, who was in Heathen on the first two records and asked him if he would contribute a couple of solos. And I, I mapped out this uh, uh, kind of uh, section where it, it builds and builds and builds um, for these guys to do these trade-off solos. So it's it's really cool. I mean, I'm, I'm really uh, the, the Teenage Me fan is uh, super stoked that I was able to get uh, the original Exodus and the original Heathen teams to play together all on one track um you know it it, it came out really cool and then there's sort of the, the ending is has this sort of epic feeling to it at the end it's it came out really cool i'm really happy with it and it's kind of a highlight for me of the uh of the album because just because i was able to get my heroes to play on this song yeah, that, that, that makes that track even more cooler. I'm glad I asked about that because I played that about three or four times in a row this morning. I was just obsessed with that track this morning. Like I've cranked it the last few weeks and each track I kind of listen to one and I'm like, man, that's my favourite on the album. Then I hear another one and that's my favourite. And I was having a chat to David and he said Shrine of Apathy is um, one of his favourites on the album. Did you have one that was your favourite or is, is you the same? It just changes every few days. Um, I don't know. I mean, there are, it's, uh, it's kind of hard. Cause it's like the whole thing is my baby. Yep. So they're all my babies. And I don't want to, I don't know if I can choose one. If I had to pick one that's sort of, uh, that I, that I'm the most proud of, I would probably say this title track. Um, yep. it, it's, it, it's got, there's something a little special about that song. It's got this magic in it. And I, uh, it's got this cool vibe to it and it's, it's still a song, but it's epic. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, for me as a songwriter, uh, I think that's one of the songs that I'm the most proud of that I've ever written. So. Yeah. Empire of the Blind, killer track. The whole album's a killer track and it was in the works for a while. What was um, pre-production like for you guys? Um, it was different from how the band has done it in the past uh you know on the for the evolution of chaos record um i would say pretty much most of the songs that like lee and um our, our old bass player john torres rest in peace yeah. um that that those guys wrote um we would kind of jam them out in the in the rehearsal room um i had some recording software already at that point and was sort of demoing songs at home um, so the three songs that I wrote for the evolution of chaos, I kind of demoed them at home and then I took them up to the guys and said, Hey, let's work on these. And we, you know, we would make some, some little changes or whatever when we kind of played them as a group, but they were more or less done as compared to, you know, putting riffs together that the other guys were doing. So, um, with this album, uh, the, the process that I used basically continued for all the songs. Um, I would demo them here at home. Uh, I would demo the music and then uh, work out some vocal patterns, you know, vocal melodies or whatever, write some lyrics and kind of demo them out and more or less put a roadmap together for everybody's, you know, parts or whatever um, on the record. And then when it came to recording, um, you know, Zeus and I uh, 
would work together. Uh, he would have some ideas. Maybe the other guys in the band would, would have some ideas to sort of, you know, make some little changes here or there or um, add something um, to the songs. And, you know, so th the cool thing is that um, there's, there's no one guy in this band that writes everything um, throughout time. It, it, you know, everybody kind of thinks of it as Lee's band because he's been in the band the whole time, but he's, he's very open to other people writing stuff. Um, as long as it sounds good and it sounds like heathen, um, he, you know, he's, he doesn't care who wrote it. Um, and I think that that's, that's been really freeing, um, for, for everybody, you know, um, the fact that there are no egos and if we come in and somebody's working on something in the studio and somebody else has an idea, they'll say, that's great. You know, let's go for it. It's very open. And um, it's a great thing, you know, especially in the studio. I mean, Lee had some ideas that I never would have thought of, just just little things that that made the songs better, you know. So it's, yeah. uh, it's a, co a cool process. I mean, it's it, it was, you know, more or less me doing a lot of the work at home for pre-production. Um, but it, again, it was it's a very open, you know, kind of writing process and you know yeah definitely yeah so what was it like once he's finally got in the studio because um he's worked with zeus for this one and um so what was that recording and production process once you finally got into there got into the studio uh well it was great i mean we kind of we kind of actually did some of it backwards um i have yep. a studio here at the house and so all the rhythm guitar tracks and my guitar solos i recorded here um and, and a lot of the rhythm tracks were actually done before we recorded the drums. Um, I would go, I, I was thankful that I had the ability to go back in and tweak things or change things based on what the, um, the drummer did uh, in the studio. Um, so, it, but, you know, it, it was a really cool process working with Zeus. Um, he had the ability to, uh, you know, really capture the, the vibe that we wanted for the sound and the overall, you know, feel of the record. Um, we wanted to have a, a hybrid between sort of the classic analog recordings of the late eighties and early nineties, and then, you know, mix it with modern technology. And so it was really cool. We were able to use some analog, you know, equipment along with the, the uh, digital recording and um, every one of the guys in the band just, crushed their you know parts when it came time to record yeah definitely this album is so good the production everything it's just i, I love heathen i love thrash metal man it's unreal and i, I was watching the, the making of the evolution of chaos documentary which I, I i thoroughly recommend everyone getting out and having a watch of that that really gives you a good insight into what heathen um done with the evolution of chaos and what you guys have kind of going forward as well it's really a really great doco to kind of peek back into that resurgence time too and you joined in around 2007 i was watching there you kind of said you first heard him around 1987 so it would have been a really cool buzz for you to come on being a fan of he's and, and kind of really helping push and drive the band as a unit forward with all the guys as well yeah i mean it's been really interesting sort of the progression of my uh role in the band you know um uh i i was the the new guy for the evolution of chaos and uh i i was almost astounded that uh, you know, that they were, op the guys were open to me contributing to the record and everything. And I was very pleased to be able to not just join the band, but then be able to write some music and, you know, tour and the whole thing. So um, things have, uh, you know, changed over the years. I mean, I, I manage the band. Um, I'm, yeah. Yeah. I think I'm the long, the third longest tenured member of the band now, um, but behind Lee and Dave. So, um, you know, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the stuff that, um, that I do for the band now, I, I, it, it's much different from, you know, when I joined, I was still working a day job when I joined the band. So, um, it's, uh, it's been a, an interesting and, uh, a really cool experience, uh, for sure. And since you mentioned it, uh, the documentary 
on the making of the evolution of chaos is now on the heathen YouTube channel um, for anybody that wants to watch it along with a uh, sort of outtakes uh, 30 minute outtakes thing that wasn't on the DVD um, that has uh, basically 30 minutes of behind the scenes footage that wasn't included. Um, so it's, it's cool, you know, to see that, that sort of captured uh, live, you know, in the moment, um there the process was certainly different for the new record but um it, it's cool to go back in time and watch the documentary too yeah it was it was a great documentary and i loved i, I love the stories in it like your audition and, and you know just everything diving diving into that album because that album kind of it had the resurgence of thrash the last 13 years since that album's kind of come out the last 13 years thrash has just grown and grown again and it's really great to see like even in australia here we have so many great thrash bands that are floating around kind of thanks to bands like heathen and exodus and testament and overkill and bands like that that have kind of influenced this generation of thrash bands coming in so i tip my hat to you guys awesome thanks yeah, so um, what's the plans with this album? I suppose you can't play live or anything, so you just got any like um live streams or anything planned like that, I suppose? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, uh, our plan, we had everything mapped out to the to the T for this yep. album release. Um, we we were we were going to be releasing the first single on the first date of our tour. Uh, and then we were going to be releasing the second single when we played Grass Pop the same day. And, uh, you know, the album was supposed to come out for another part of a tour. And so we had everything kind of lined up perfectly. And then uh, the pandemic happened and all that sort of fell That's by what... the wayside, unfortunately. So, uh, you know, we could have. We could have uh, held the record longer. Uh, some bands finished their album and they still haven't released it. Um, but, uh, you know, who knows how long this is going to go on for. And um, we just figured while people are at home and they want new, you know, new music or new entertainment and they're stuck there, uh, why not give them the new record? They waited, yep. you know, the fans waited uh, patiently for 10 years for the thing. So why not put it out while people are craving something new? And, and you know, we're just really hoping that people, um, maybe more people will hear it because they're home and not busy, you know, going to concerts and movies and whatever, um, you know. Yeah, it's, exactly. Uh, it's a terrible, terrible uh, sort of time that we're in in terms of um, everything being locked down or, uh temporarily halted um uh, but if we can have some new music that maybe people connect with um that's what that that would be a a, a positive i guess exactly. that would come out of it and another positive as well that leaves more money for the pre-orders man you can get along and pre-order this night and get some really kick-ass shirts merch and you know support bands like yourself that way as well just because we can't go to concerts doesn't mean we can't support you know a little more than just the the like and subscribe on your spotify's buy the album buy the merch and support the heck out of empire of the blind this is one of those albums you're just going to want to buy and crank really loud so the neighbors can hear Craigan, this has been an absolute pleasure, mate. I'm going to let you get onto it. Thank you very, very much for your time, eh? Oh, my pleasure. Thanks again for having me on. Uh, absolute pleasure. Thank you, mate. Have a lovely day. Cheers. You too. Cheers. Cheers, mate.